Welcome to part three of the 2020 National Weather Service Milwaukee Sullivan Storm Spotter training sessions online here. Uh, we are up to part two of four for the day in the life of a storm spotter where it's time to go out and look at storms. When do I need to do that? So when should I go out to spot storms? Sometimes if you go when the watch is issued, it might be a little bit too early. And if you wait until the warning gets issued, it might be a little bit too late. So generally somewhere in between the two somewhere, uh, when the storms are maybe a county or two to your west or away from you. There might not always be a watch that gets issued, uh, so you might just have to wait and, and see how close the storms are before you go out and spot. But uh, generally sometime between when the watch is issued and before that warning comes out is when you want to go out there. So for this example here, storms are going through southern Wisconsin at about 340 is when that wa the watch comes out for your location. If you go out immediately, you're going to be waiting there for, uh, it looks like at least about a half, an hour and a half until those storms get there. So it might be a little bit early. But uh, somewhere, somewhere after that and the 441 when the, the, wa the warning gets issued for Waukesha, might be time to get out there and get ready to, to look at those storms before they come in. So, like I mentioned, generally it's after the watch, uh, but before or around when that warning issue, issuance comes out, you got to kind of get an eye on which way the storms are moving. So, generally we say about a county or two downstream from where those storms are is when you want to start spotting and uh, get to your, your mobile spot or if you're going to be reporting from home as well. Like I said, there might not be a watch that gets issued ahead of time, so it's more so onto the spotter to try to uh, know when to go out. And as I mentioned, spotters are self-activating. The weather service doesn't tell the spotters when to go out and, and look at the storm, so it's important to stay ahead of the storms and uh, monitor the conditions in nearby counties where there's warnings and be proactive. There might be times where you probably don't see anything at all, but it kind of helps to develop your experience into what you're looking at and where you should be for, uh, for seeing those different conditions. This radar loop here is from the Shatak tornado from back in 2017, the long track tornado there, and just a, a trend of the, the radar there and get an idea of where the storm actually was. So radar is your friend. You should use this to get a good sense of how far away storms are and which way they're moving. Download a good app that shows your location relative to the storm so that you can get an idea of which way they're moving and how fast they're potentially going to be moving in. The most likely field that you're going to look at is something called reflectivity. This is essentially telling you how much stuff is out there. So our radar sends out its pulse of energy. It bounces off some stuff like rain or hail or snow. And then however much of that energy bounces or reflects back to the radar, it paints an image on a map saying exactly how how intense it is and where, where exactly that is at. So this is our, our tool to be able to tell exactly where the heaviest rainfall is and looking at different radar characteristics. On our website, you'll see there's two different types of radar reflectivity you can look at, base and composite. Base is just the lowest scan that our radar is doing, and the composite is piecing together every single scan as that uh, radar pulse goes uh, from one level to another. So you might in the composite actually be seeing a lot of uh, rain that's actually well above the ground and not reaching the ground at all. A tool that we use for putting out warnings is velocity or storm relative velocity and this tells us which way the the motions are actually going in the storm so we can see when motions are moving away from it that's the pinks and reds and when they're going towards the radar it is uh, painted a green color. So this is the Elk Mound tornado from this past year. The motions moving away from the radar right next to the ones coming in indicate there's rotation in that part of the storm there. The brighter the colors too, the, the faster those motions are moving. So with spotters and a lot of storm chasers, uh, the ideal position to be in is on the south or southeast side of the storm uh, so that you can look up into 
the the part of the storm where the air is moving into it, the updraft part of it, and that's typically where you're going to see the tornado, um, especially with uh, storms like this that uh, might have some rotation on the back southwest side of the storm. If you're anywhere on the north or northeast side of the storm, you're not going to be able to see it. You're just going to see a bunch of heavy rainfall or maybe some hail falling uh, to the to north, northeast side of that where the tornado actually is. So a lot of times spotters and chasers like to be on that south southeast side of the storm looking up into it. And as you can see here, this was a, a storm out in the plains. All the little green dots down here are where the storm chasers were at on this storm, looking up to the, the northwest to be able to see where that potential rotation is with the storm. So you get a sense of where uh, those storm chasers want to be to be able to, to see where the tornado potentially is. The last couple bits here is just uh, the spotter safety. Your your safety is more important than a report. We don't want you putting yourself into trouble just to get us a report. So if you ever feel unsafe, just seek shelter. <laughs>